Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain what is a megaphone. A megaphone is a handheld cone-shaped acoustic horn used to amplify a person's voice or other sounds and direct it in a given direction. Well, it's referred by many names such as bullhorn, blowhorn, folded horn, or a loud hailer. Now let's look at the construction and let's look at how does a megaphone even work and what are the types of megaphone available and what are the products on the market. Alright, here's a construction of a megaphone. So inside the megaphone, you can see the blue and the red tubes. So these are the tubes through which the sounds are going to pass and progressively going to get amplified to be heard outside as a loud sound. Now let's look at the working principle in detail. Alright, now let's look at the working principle of a megaphone. Consider a human holding the megaphone and speaking into it. So sound is generated from the human and that sound enters the megaphone. So first it enters the blue tube so where it starts to get amplified a little bit. And then it travels back through the red tube getting amplified even further and the third time it travels through the cone and it gets amplified even further that thereby coming out as a very loud sound. So this is the working principle uh, of a megaphone. Sound reflects back and forth inside the megaphone. And, you know, after multiple reflections, the amplitude increases to a great extent, and which is why, you know, a sound heard out, outside the megaphone is pretty loud compared to the input sound. An electric megaphone is an advanced version of an acoustic megaphone which uses electrical power. So it consists of a microphone to capture the input sound and convert it into electrical audio signals. It consists of an amplifier, which is powered by the batteries, to amplify the electrical audio signals. And finally, a loudspeaker to convert the electrical audio signals back to sound waves and project it out. Now, the shape of the megaphone still remains the same, the cones and the tubes, and the amplification is done by both the shape and the electrical amplifier. Now, it's possible to achieve amplifications up to 90 to 100 decibel, they are slightly heavier than their acoustical counterparts. They are often mimicked as uh, movable PA systems because you can take them anywhere and you can address mass gatherings. This is a frequency response for a typical megaphone. So if you don't know what frequency response means, check out the link in the description below where I have made a video especially on frequency response. Alright, frequency response in short is how well an uh, an equipment reproduces the input sound accurately. In this case, it's a megaphone. So how well the megaphone is able to reproduce the input sound as you know given to it. So as we observe here, the curve is somewhat flat between 450 to 6000 hertz. Beyond that range, it's either going way too low in the lower end and in the high end, it's showing peaks. So the, this frequency response is good for a megaphone because at the end of the day it's only going to be used by a human to address mass gatherings and human frequencies are within that range. But in case if it's being used to play music or instruments, it might not do a great job because it doesn't have a good frequency response in those regions. A spectrum graph is a graph of sound level versus the frequency. So spectrographs are used to study what frequencies are present in a given sound and what are their amplitudes. So in this case, we have two curves, the red curve and the blue curve. So the red curve is a spectrograph of a sound without the use of a megaphone, and the blue one is with the use of a megaphone. Now, this is not real-time data, but this, the purpose of this plot is to illustrate the fact that the sound, the, the, the sound pressure level coming out of a megaphone is certainly greater than the input sound, which is evident here. Megaphones tend to be directional in their radiation of sound. Directivity of a, of a megaphone is dependent on its precise shaping. So the lower and the mid frequencies, they kind of spread out from the cone, but the high frequencies are really directional. Also, the shape of a megaphone directly affects the range of projection. So the narrower horns or the narrower megaphones compensate for lower power by concentrating sound more sharply than the wider horns. All right, let's look at some megaphones available in the market. So this one is TOA model ER1206. It has a rated power output of 6 watt. This is a Thunder Power 450 version, and it has a rated power output of 35 watt. Notice the portable mic in this case. So, you know, the user need not keep the megaphone close to his mouth. He can simply, you know, pull the trigger and hold it with one hand and keep the microphone, the portable microphone near his mouth. 
All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, hit the comments and I'll be sure to respond. All right, thanks a lot. Have a great day.